force effective measures, control measures or irrigation. Qualcuno di voi che qui da ieri avrà detto ancora lui, eh, bene sì, vi tocca, ma prometto che sarò sintetico e noioso. So, sorry for the Italian, I switch uh, to English. Uh, we are preparing a new action plan for the management of the grey squirrel in Italy within the new uh, European regulation. You already saw most of the information that I will present uh, at the beginning of the presentation. So, We know that uh, the grey squirrel is present in UK and Italy. In Italy we have uh, quite a lot of population because it's present in Piedmont, Lombardy, uh, Veneto, Umbria, and we have also some scattered observation here in Tuscany and recently in uh, Lazio. And uh, the main problem is that uh, from Italy the species could spread across Europe and especially the population in Perugia in Umbria can reach uh, the southern Apennine and the area where there is the only other one endemic squirrel in Europe. The only endemic squirrel that is the Calabrian black squirrel, the Shurus meridionalis that was recognized by, as a, a, a new species recently just last year from Luke and other colleagues. So this is really important species because it's endemic and very localized and it's not too far from, uh, from here, from Perugia. And uh, we all know that uh, the new regulation asks every country to produce action plan with the aim to eradicate the species when possible or otherwise to mitigate the impacts, especially on biodiversity. And so there is a great responsibility of Italy in respect to the other European country, because UK and Ireland are island, not Italy. And uh, fortunately we had two life projects, and so the action plan will be basically fit by the results of these uh, two life projects that uh, You're already here yesterday, today, and we'll hear tomorrow. And so, uh, the plan is based on these results, and Lombardy, a mixture of eradication and uh, population control. For Piedmont, long-term control, and from Liguria, it's nearly eradicated. In, uh, in Umbria, a single, now probably not large population, large in the past, probably a few hundred animals that should be removed in the, in the next year. So probably it's still possible an eradication, otherwise it should be transformed in a long-term control. But uh, I think now it's an important step because if we achieve the eradication, of course we remove a certain number of animals, but if we transform eradication in long-term control, the number of animals that should be removed in the long term will be much more. So uh, even from the welfare aspect, it's really important to complete the work here in, uh, in Perugia, even to save, of course, the, the, the species here in the in south of Italy. And then there are some uh, Probably there is a population in Veneto, we still have uh, very few data uh, because there is some inertia in starting to work here in this, uh, in this region. And there are some scattered records, single animals in, uh, in Tuscany. They probably came from the pet trade that now stop it, but uh, It was legal before, and even probably from some illegal trade. We already learned yesterday that the animals from uh, Perugia are very genetically close to uh, population in Piedmont, and we know that uh, people with uh, a state that don't like too much squirrel but don't want to kill them ask people or pay people to remove 
the animal for them and then we don't know what happened with these animals. And we already saw that uh, uh, it's important in the Italian situation to remove the gray because the red came back. So you can really see the results uh, in one or two years, like here in, uh, in Perugia. And it is impossible to show to the people this kind of data uh, showing that there is an effect removing the, the gray squirrel. And this is one of the results of the life project in, uh, in Lombardy. One of the, this large area, this management area, in this area, the gray squirrel were nearly eradicated and some of this place, the red come back. The problem is that this, this large area where the owner of a large property never allowed us to enter the property. So I don't know if now with the new regulation we are able to manage to enter this property, but property, but it's really important because we are really close to uh, remove uh, the gray squirrel from a large area, but uh, starting from this point, uh, new colonization is really possible. So it's possible to eradicate. The problem is the effort. One of the problem here in Italy, even inside the the true life project that we, and I think this it was a, a problem and our mistake, uh, we don't foresee the money even inside the, the life project to recruit enough traffic. So if we look at the project, at the eradication of the koi pool in England, they recruit 20 trappers for 10 years. And of course, it's a lot of money but is much less than we pay now for managing the, the koi pool. And basically the first life project was based on the work or, or of one or two people per region. And uh, if I had to plan a new life project, don't ask me, but <laughs> if someone <laughs> wants to plan a new life project, I think that you have to foresee 10, 20 people working directly on the field because this is the work that we have to do. And then, of course, there is communication, management, and more. But uh, working on the field is, of course, the basic of management. And uh, some things about serialization. So it's effective for small population, but there is one problem. And it's not only connected to, to the money that you have to pay for the sterilization, that is one, more or less 100, 150 euro per animal. The problem is not only about the money, but about the time of the work. If you compare live trapping and euthanasia, you have planning, live trapping, and this is similar in the two cases. And in the first case, you kill the animal and stop. Then if you achieve eradication, you have to monitor the area. Even with uh, control, you have to monitor the area. If you start with surgical sterilization, you have planning, like trapping. And then you have to bring the animal to a veterinarian clinic. The vet sterilizes the animal. You have to uh, keep the animal in the clinic for one, two, three days. It depends on the single animal. And then we decide to release the animal in another place. So you have to realize to transport again the animal in another place. And then, of course, you have to take care in some way of this new population. So you have to monitor the release animal and support feeding them, at least at the beginning. So there is a much more work. And this is a problem because animals Con, can also only be removed in accordance with the availability of the clinic to operate uh, the animals. And of course, especially at the beginning of the work, it's more easy to trap the animal than to uh, operate them. So here I compare two situations with uh, Raconigi, uh, when we start in the 90s to the first eradication trial. The population was 300 animals, more or less similar to the situation in Genoa and Erby. 
So here we have a drop in euthanasia, here drop in and uh, surgical sterilization. The population was nearly similar, 200 and 300. So I consider the effort to remove the first 188 animals. It takes more or less 1,000 trap days. This, the, that is the number of traps activated every day by the number of days that the traps were maintained open, active. So it was similar, 1,000 and 1,300. What is the difference? This work was done in eight days because we using 160 traps, two people working for eight days, and uh, these animals were like trapped and sterilized in 60 days with four people working. Because at the beginning, the first day, we trapped 40 animals in the first day here in Raconigi. It was not possible in Genoa because the vet cannot uh, operate 40 animals. So when we reach 10 animals in a week, we have to close the, the, do the, the door of the, of the traps. So the effort at the end is 7.50 more in, uh, in days and in, in effort. And what does this mean? If you want to eradicate uh, a population, you have to drop very quickly the population, remove the female that can reproduce, of course, and increase again the population. And uh, the risk is that if you are not able to drop the population, and with a removal that exceeds the reproductive success, you continue to, re to remain. You continue to remain for a long term in this situation, and you never eradicate the population. So, the main problem with uh, surgical sterilization is, of course, a question of money. But we know that in, with some European project, we can get enough money to sterilize 1,000 of animals. But the main problem is that the removal of uh, the animal is too slow. With a large population, you are not able to drop the, the reproduction. And so probably you risk to never reach uh, the eradication. So in my opinion, it can work only with uh, 200, 300, 400 animals and not more. So we start to, we are now drafting the, the action plan using this, all this information. And uh, uh, yesterday it was presented the Alien Squill Emergency Team with new guidelines that will be adopted, uh, adopted at the national level so we can explain to every administration what to do when, if they find uh, a new nucleus of, of gray squirrel of another species. Because we have to take all the invasion when they are here before they start to spread and to spread and to increase the population. Otherwise, we again repeat the case of the of the gray squirrel. And what's the future? We already uh, talk about this tomorrow. The future is that uh, we have to stop uh, the pathway. We know that squirrel arrive through the pet trade. We know that they are able to establish uh, a new population, different species. This is an evaluation, a worldwide evaluation with different species. You have 60, 70 percent of uh, uh, likelihood to have a new population with only a couple of uh, animals. So releasing few animals, one couple, two couple, there is a great risk to have a uh, new population. And this is the trade, the pet trade. These are all the other species that can invade Italy or Europe, came in from the pet trade. This is just uh, some days ago in an uh, exhibition in, uh, in Lombardy. This is Carlo Schurus finlaisoni. It's not in the regulation, so you can sell this animal. But we already have two population of these species in Italy, because I think it's in e Italy is the center of xenodiversity 
regarding uh, alien squirrels. And this was spotted free just uh, last year. Fortunately, it seems that they were only two and they disappeared, but uh, uh, there is always a risk of new invasion. So we really have to work uh, stopping not only the species inside the regulation, maybe the Italian list connected to, to the regulation can stop some of these pieces, but the, our approach should be really more global. And it's time to agree even with animal rights group to work together. Of course, maybe not in management, but at least in this kind uh, of uh, uh, work that we can produce together to try to stop the pet trade of squealers and even also other species. Thank you for your attention.